According to the BBC report, and they both made a mistake. When you add up all of the evidence, it, it incontrovertibly points to uh, and supports the hypothesis of controlled demolition. Each one of these alone may be uh, picked apart a little bit, but they all do stand together to point uh, to the explosive controlled demolition There's hypothesis. There's another piece of footage, actually, and uh, it's a vox pop. Somebody puts a microphone in a camera by a guy in the street shortly after the buildings came down, and you're suggesting that the guy that says that it, you know, it fell down and it was blown up is a uh, official script. He was a plant. It's a suggestion. When when people w go, but hang on a moment. Let's sort this out. You're an architect. You're claiming scientific evidence. Yes. How do you get from there? to suggesting a massive planting process of people delivering lies to the world within minutes of 9-11. Well, obviously, we're talking about something that must have been planned months before. Well, we are, but that's not scientific evidence, is it? Well, there's plenty of scientific evidence to support the fact that uh, there, there was foreknowledge. We have uh, people caught on CNN, mysterious construction workers and policemen caught on CNN tape, uh, walking away from Building 7, turning around, hearing an explosion, saying, keep your eye on that building, it's going to come down. The policeman says the building's well, going to blow up. I keep my eye on the building, it's going to come down. down, absolutely. Well, how let's, do they know? And how did Kevin McPadden hear a countdown? Three, two, one, and then explosions, and then the World Trade Center coming down. All of this is on our DVD, which is available online, by the way, at our website site, ae911truth.org. And it's on your DVD that you say, a misdeveloped, fed by official sources and the media, that the impact of planes and burning jet fuel destroyed the buildings. Were there planes? Well, that... You're talking about the Twin Towers. This is the official story. They were That's hit by right. planes. There's a large explosion. Were there planes? Of course. So they got the planes to crash into the Twin Towers at exactly the right time, and the planes crashing into the towers didn't destroy the incredibly carefully choreographed series of controlled explosions. Yeah, we're not talking planes. about normal con con explosives here, C4 and RDX, -like, which are high-energy explosives. We're talking about very modern, and this was developed in about 2000 and documented by Livermore Lab, these extremely par small particles, nanoscale particles of aluminum oxide and iron uh, uh, particles that are found in this, these small unignited chips, mm. as well as the ignited sp iron spheres, which yeah. have no re possible reason for being there. This is this is can, can, these can be carefully controlled so that the damage by the airplane uh, does not set the whole thing off. So the airplane has no connection with the controlled explosions. Or it has. Well, uh, the airplane hits, and in the case of the South Tower, 56 minutes later, the explosions begin, and we document those very carefully at 2 so p.m. So what? Somebody, is somebody in control of the explosions? Would those explosions need somebody with a finger on a button somewhere? A finger or a computer? I don't know. Let's get a real investigation and find out w how they pulled this off. You know, there's, I mean, there's a lot of very key questions you're asking here. We don't have the answers to all of them. We speculate here and there about some of them. So if the U.S. government was going to explode the buildings and they needed the plane to crash into them in order to provide them with a cover for the explosions, that would be the scenario, would it? Yeah, and you probably wouldn't trust uh, uh, hijackers who failed Cessna school to run the planes into the buildings. So there were no... Al Qaeda hijackers on well, the planes. Well, uh, there may or may not have been some of them on the planes. We don't know, but we do know that eight of them were interviewed uh, by BBC, London Guardian, etc. Uh, they were they were alive, and the FBI has admitted they don't have the hijackers' identities clear at all now. Um, so, and we know that there were, in fact, remote control devices on the airplanes that were capable of guiding them to wherever they needed to go. So we also you think know that, that most... whoever was in charge of the controlled demolition would be in charge of those aeroplanes? Presumably. Why? Why would somebody want to do that? Okay. So what, what is the, why would somebody, why would we, if 
the government or, or private. In, we don't know who's actually involved. You know, we, we well, do, but why would they want to do well, that? What, what happened after 9-11? Interestingly enough, let's go, want to look at let's go back to loose change, which pretty much covers everything you talk about and more. Uh, and that's not true. We talked about the science-based forensic evidence, and they don't touch on most of it, as a matter of fact. Loose change suggests that the U.S. government carried it out to help Larry Silverstein. Oh. Well, I, I think that's a small... Uh, uh, you think that's possible? I think he leased the towers, and the U.S. government wanted to help him collect his insurance money. If you, the people who have researched this subject, like David Ray Griffin and his excellent uh, I've spoken body to David work, Ray Griffin, yes. Good. He's done some excellent work, and he's, uh, he's discussed what who, who had the motive, the means, the opportunity. This is a crime. We have to ask these kinds of questions. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth do not uh, ask or answer these questions, but he suggests uh, that there was incredible profits made as a result of 9-11 throughout the uh, arms industry, the oil industry, the banking industry, Inside the insurance the industry, and the media. The falling what? Airline. Inside of traders betting on the falling airline. Well, this stocks, too. There were millions, millions uh, made uh, on, on the fate of these airliners betting that they their value would go down the was next there day. Was gold in the basement? Do you think there was gold in the basement? I don't know about gold in the basement. Because there's a suggestion on Liz Change that the plan was to steal gold in the basement. Right. You don't. You don't. I don't know. I haven't researched. There's it. no researched scientific evidence of any traces of gold I in the basement. I don't know. And I don't know about the Pentagon either. We have not uh, looked into the Pentagon uh, seriously uh, yet. You plan to? Well, there, yes. There's, there's a lot of conflicting evidence at the Pentagon. It's quite arguable. I don't want to get into a bunch of arguments. I want to focus new, the New Zealand listeners uh, to the evidence found uh, in our, on our online and on our DVD and today at 2 p.m. at the Te Papa Museum, where we'll be speaking about all of this for two hours. It takes two hours to understand all of this vast body of evidence, such as the freefall acceleration of seven, the two-thirds of freefall acceleration of these twin towers. That's against 80,000 tons of structural steel. Let's just Buildings summarize can't then. fall that fast. Let's just summarize the implications of what you're saying. You're saying, was it Bush or Clinton, do you think, that might have been I have no this? idea. Well, you're saying that the U.S. regime, whether it be Bush or whether it be I didn't say the U.S. regime. We don't know who did this. Let's get a real Could investigation. Well, Let's let the chips fall where they may. When you, you have a crime, you investigate thoroughly, right. and then you don't go into it saying, oh, who could have done it, before you even start a fully resourced investigation. So here is the crime mm -hmm. that you are claiming. Someone could blast the Pentagon, could wire every floor of the Twin Towers with explosives without attracting any attention and prime the charges, make allowance for the planes coming through on schedule, drop each tower in a perfectly timed collapse. Well, the evidence suggests that. It's, it's very compelling. 95 what happened to Flight 93? Do you 90, have views on that? Ninety-five percent of the people who come to our presentation end up agreeing with us. That's how compelling the evidence is. Regarding attracting attention, well, in the Twin Towers, if they had access to the core columns and beams through the elevator shafts, no one would have found out save security. And if you had an elevator modernization the nine months prior to 9-11, which we did have, Ace Elevator had the contract, they would have unlimited access to those columns and beams and could Why have planted those explosives. That? On the two World Trade Center towers, the planes would have cut some of those support columns, ignited fires sufficient to weaken the remaining steel structures. The perimeter columns buckled, the weight of the collapsing top stories generated a momentum, the rest of the building couldn't stop. This is the official story. Why couldn't that have happened? Because happen? we have something in, in, uh, in the Western civilization called uh, uh, laws of momentum, uh, Newton's law. Uh, you can't have a building falling as fast, just about as fast as the debris falling outside the perimeter. Uh, you can't have the building falling that fast through 80,000 tons of structural steel designed to resist that with a safety factor of three to five. These buildings are that much stronger than they need to be to resist any such collapse. And by the way, there was no pile driver driving the rest of the building down. It's destroyed itself. The point, the 15 story section above the point of jet plane impacts is destroyed itself. There's nothing driving the building down after that. The photos and videos are very clear. 
fire, the building's tearing itself apart at almost freefall acceleration and ejecting perimeter wall units 600 feet laterally at 50 to 70 miles per hour. I don't know the conversion there, but it's very, very fast. These can only be propelled by explosives.